Good morning to all. Today I am going to teach module 4 of engineering mechanics which is dynamics of rectilinear and curvilinear translation. The module 1, and 2 and 3 we studied statics where the body is at rest. In module 4 and 5 we will study the body in motion which is dynamics. So in module 4 and 5 the body is not in rest which is in motion always okay now i request all students to ready with the class notes calculator pen while watching this video okay let us start dynamics dynamics deals with the forces and their effect on body which are in motion now this dynamics has two branches one is kinematic and kinetic in kinematics, it deals with the bodies in motion without considering the forces which is responsible for their motion. That is, we are actually studying the displacement, velocity and acceleration only. We are not bothered or not considering the force which is responsible for their motion. Now, let us consider a body which is at location A and a force F is acting on the body. Now the body will move from A to another location B along the line of action of the force if there is a single force is acting. Now the body has displacement, velocity and acceleration and the force is acting on the body. Now if you are studying the motion, steady means we are finding out the displacement, velocity, acceleration at a different location of the body and we are not uh, considering the force then it is actually kinematic, kinematic studies we are doing. And if you are considering the force also, then that branch is kinetics, where it deals with the bodies in motion due to the application of force. So that uh, these two are the main branches of dynamics. And uh, before going deep into the uh, mo this module, we should know what are the different types of motion a body can have if a force is acting. So they, there are mainly four types of motion for a body. One is rectilinear motion. Rectilinear motion means the body is moving in a straight line. Second is curvilinear motion. Uh, the name itself uh, explain it, explain the, um, uh, the motion where the body is in, uh, move in the uh, like a curve. The third is rotational motion where the body move around uh, a particular axis, move around an axis. And the fourth one is vibrational motion where the body move to and fro. The vibrational motion can be, uh, can be of two type. One is uh, simple harmonic motion, the other one is normal oscillatory motion. Now, the main topics of module 4 are one is dynamics of rectilinear translation and the second is dynamics of curvilinear translation. The dynamics of rotation and dynamics of uh, vibration is covered in module 5. Now the dynamics of rectilinear translation is again classified into two which is kinematics of rectilinear translation and kinetics of rectilinear translation. Now the dynamics of curvilinear translation is again divided into two, kinematics of curvilinear translation and kinematics of, uh, sorry, kinetics of curvilinear translation. Now in this lecture, I will discuss the first topic, which is 1.1, kinematics of rectilinear translation only. Uh, 1.2, 2.1 and 2.2, I will discuss in uh, coming videos. Now we will go to the topic 1.1 which is kinematics of rectilinear translation the first first uh, the important thing in in this topic is equations of kinematics kinematics of rectilinear translation in rectilinear translation mode motion of the body is along a straight line that line is taken as the x axis now displacement of the body is represented by x which is function of time. So x is equal to f of t. Now velocity, velocity of the body is the derivative of displacement with respect to time. 
so v equal to dx by dt the third is acceleration of the body represented by a which is the second derivative of displacement this expression a equal to dv by dt plus v into dv by ds is the general expression it is used when the body sorry when the velocity is a function of time and displacement if it is simply the uh, velocity is simply the function of time only then we can use either a equal to dv by dt or a equal to d square x by dt square which is the second derivative of displacement so uh, you should know both equation the general expression a equal to dv by dt plus v into dv by ds and the uh, special case a equal to dv by dt or a equal to dx d square x by dt square this a equal to dv by dt uh, everybody know this expression but the first expression actually the general expression is a equal to dv by dt plus v into dv by ds while solving the problems in this module the first equation is also required now the special case is motion under uniform acceleration if body has uh, if the motion of the body is uh, in uh, with a constant acceleration or uniform acceleration we can use v equal to u plus at s is equal to ut plus half at square v square equal to u square plus 2s these three equations can only be used if the body has a constant or uniform acceleration it cannot be used when the body has acceleration which is function of time or function of position in that case we have to use the general expression for acceleration this equation 1 2 and 3 uh, we are all already uh, studying in plus 2 where uh, we are not uh, considering uh, variable acceleration case but in this module uh, there will be numerical problem where acceleration is a, a function of time also and also problems were acceleration uh, uniform acceleration case problem is also there so for variable uh, as i uh, discussed uh, previously uh, for variable acceleration cases general equation has to be used now we will go to the uh, one problem where uniform acceleration is there and we will go to uh, problem where non-uniform acceleration are coming now in this problem uh, question number one a train is uniformly accelerated it's already given uniformly accelerated so we can use that v equal to u plus at s is equal to ut plus half at square and v square equal to u square plus 2s now go, uh, coming to the question a train is uniformly accelerated and passes successive kilometer stone with velocities of 18 km per hour and 36, uh, 36 km per hour respectively and we need to calculate the velocity when it passes the third kilometer stone and we are we, we also need to find out the time taken for each of these two intervals of one kilometer now a train uh, is moving uh, in a straight line so it is a rectilinear translation the train we can consider uh, moving in a straight line so first kilometer stone second kilometer stone and there is a third kilometer stone also so first kilometer stone and second kilometer stone are the distance between the kilometer stone is simply one kilometer it is same for the second and third kilometer now let us consider the first kilometer stone is at the location A and second at B and third at C. Now here it is given the train is as a uniform acceleration so A. Now let, uh, let us consider VA which is the velocity of the train at the point A which is given in the question 18 km per hour. So if you convert into corresponding meter per second 18 into 5 by 18 so we will get 5 meter per second. Now let VB is the velocity of the train at the point B which is 36 km per hour if you convert it into corresponding meter per second we will get 10 meter per second. Now let us take VC as the velocity of the train at point C. 
Now displacement between A and B S is equal to 1 kilometer which is 1000 meter. Now we need to find out Vc the velocity of the train at the third kilometer stone and time taken by the train from A to B. Let us take that time take uh, time as T1 and from B to C which is T2. Now V is the initial velocity which is U and VB is the final velocity V for the motion from A to B. Then using the equation V square equal to U square plus 2S. Now uh, before going to that equation we cannot use the first two equation because time is not given. Only in the third equation time is not required for the third equation. So we will use the third equation V square equal to U square plus 2As. Now from A to B motion VA is initial velocity U, VB is final velocity V. So V 10, 10 square equal to 5 square plus 2A into 1000. So from this equation we will get A acceleration uh, you can uh, um, uh, do it in the calculator so we will get 0 0.0375 meter per second square it is actually second square now to find vc consider the motion from b to c now the initial and final velocity will change now the initial velocity become vb and final velocity become vc now using the same equation we will get vc square equal to 10 square this u is actually vb we are considering the motion from b to c so 10 square plus 2 since we assumed uniform acceleration for the train a equal to this value you can use for the motion from b to c also so 0 0.0375 into 1000 so from this equation we will get vc 13.2 meter per second which is the answer so uh, try uh, try to get this answer try um, note down the values and do it in the calculator and try to get this answer now the second part is we need to find out t1 and t2 from a to b and from b to c considering the motion from a to b v equal to u plus at we can use that equation because A we found, found for the entire motion of the body A is constant. So we can use this equation V equal to U plus A T. Now here V become V become V B and U become V A. V B we know 10, V A we know 5, A value you can use and T1 we don't know we need to find out T1. So from this equation, you simply you will get T1, uh, 133.3 second. Now, by considering the motion from B to C, we know Vc. From B to C, V is Vc. We already found out the value. And U is, initial velocity is Vb, so 10. Using this equation, V equal to U plus AT, we will get T to S 85.3 seconds. So uh, that's all about that uh, question. Now we will go to the uh, another question where acceleration is not uniform. Now question 2. The position of a particle is given by S is equal to 0.5 T cube plus 4 T where T is in second. You need to find out the velocity and acceleration of the particle when t equal to 3 seconds. This is actually a very simple question. That is, velocity is given by dv ds by dt. s is already given. So, you, you, where s is a function of time, you can simply uh, do the de uh, derivative of that uh, expression of s. Then we will get 1.5 t square plus 4. Now, if you substitute the value of t equal to 3 in this equation, you will get a value for velocity 17.5 meter per second. So, it is a very simple question. You need to find out the velocity, uh, the displacement expression in t is given. 
so if the expression of displacement in 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 terms of t is given you can simply do the derivative of that expression then the first uh, derivative of the displacement you will get uh, v and for finding out the acceleration you need to find out second derivative of a uh, second derivative of the displacement or go for the second deri uh, first derivative of velocity both are same so acceleration is equal to dv by dt so we already have the expression for v 1.5 t square plus 4 if you do the uh, derivative of this expression of velocity you will get 1.5 into 2 t 1.5 into 2 is 3 so 3 t so you need to find out the acceleration at time t equal to 3 so in this expression put t equal to 3 you will get 9 so it's a very simple question now we will go to a problem where acceleration the expression of acceleration is given and you need to find out velocity and uh, distance uh, stuff like that so a particle starting from rest move in a straight line whose acceleration is given by equation a equal to 10 minus 0 0.006 s, s square where a is in meter per second square a is the acceleration it is given to be meter per second square and s is in meter s is the displacement now determine velocity of the particle when it has traveled 50 meters you need to find out velocity of the particle when it has traveled 50 meter and the second uh, part of this question is you need to find out the distance traveled by the particle when it come to rest now so we have to start from the expression of acceleration which is already given a equal to 10 minus 0 0.006 s square now how will you start from expression of acceleration to get to get velocity and distance See, if you look at the previous question, question number 2, the expression for displacement in time is given and you need to find out velocity and acceleration. Velocity is the first derivative and acceleration is the second derivative of displacement or first derivative of velocity. So, if acceleration is given and you need to find out velocity, you have to go for integration, integration of this expression. So you have to rearrange and do the integration to find out velocity and displacement. So if uh, the expression of acceleration is given. Again, if you look at the expression of acceleration, it is function of position also. Acceleration is no more constant. So you will never use the equation v equal to u plus at or s is equal to ut plus of at square or v, v square equal to u square plus 2s those three equation we you should never use for the problem like this okay now acceleration we already know acceleration is v into dv by ds since acceleration is not a function of time that term will go the general expression of acceleration is as i already discussed a equal to dv by dt plus v into dv by ds so dv by dt will go in this expression because it, uh, time uh, term is not there. So v into dv by ds which is a equal to the given expression 10 minus 0 0.06 s square. Now if, if ds go to the LHS, LHS we will get v dv equal to 10 minus 0 0.006 s square ds. Now this expression you have to integrate. So if you integrate this equation 1, we will get we will get v square by 2 equal to 10 s minus 0 0.006 s cube divided by 3 plus c1. Don't forget to put this constant c1. So finally we will get v square s if you multiply with the 2 v square is 20 s minus 0 0.004 s cube plus 2 c1. 2 c1 is another constant. You can put it as k1 or something like that. Okay. Now, you know it. That is equation 2. Now, since the particle is starting from rest, it is given the particle is starting from rest. So, the condition is value of displacement is 0 and v equal to 0. 
when v equal to 0 since the particle is starting from bus initial velocity is 0 and initial displacement is 0 so s is equal to 0 and v equal to 0 in this expression then we will get c1 equal to 0 so this equation 2 the um, particle has to satisfy this equation during the entire motion the particle has to satisfy this equation so uh, you can apply this equation at any point of motion of the body so we can put v equal to 0 then s should be also 0 so in this expression you will, you will simply get c1 equal to 0 so the expression for v square is equal to 20s minus 0 0.004 s cube now in order to get the velocity of the particle so the part a is you need to find out the velocity of the particle when it has traveled 50 meters if you simply look at this equation 3 if you put s equal to 50 meter we will get the velocity value it is very simple v square equal to 20 into s is 50 so 20 into 50 minus 0 0.004 into 50 cube so you will get the value v square is 500 and v equal to 22.36 meter per second so that is the answer for the part a and part b is distance traveled by the particle when it comes to rest so when the particle come to rest the velocity become will be zero therefore by substituting v equal to zero in the equation three we will get 20s minus 0 0.04 s cube equal to zero now if you take s outside you will get the expression s into 20 minus 0 0.004 s square equal to zero so either s equal to zero or 20 minus 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.004 s square equal to 0 at s equal to 0 the body is it is in its initial state so it is uh, already we know the body start from the initial state so the part b question is what is the distance traveled by the particle when it come to rest so the body starts from rest and after some time it again coming to rest so in this expression if you uh, solve this uh, expression you will get the value of s which is 70.7 meter so it is the distance traveled by the particle when it come to rest okay so uh, read the question again and uh, try to solve by yourself and if any doubt again uh, refer the video, this video okay we will solve one more question and uh, we will stop this section and we will go to the next section 1.2 which is kinetics of rectilinear transfer now question number four a body moves along a straight line and its acceleration a which varies with time is given by a equal to 2 minus 3t after 5 seconds from start of observation its velocity is observed to be 20 meter per second and after 10 seconds from start of observation the body was at 85 meters from the origin you need to determine its acceleration and velocity at the time of start distance from the origin at the start of observation and the time after start of observation in which the velocity becomes zero now in this question the expression for acceleration is given which is in terms of time t and two condition is given after five seconds from the start of observation its velocity is 20 meter per second and after 10 seconds uh, from the start of observation its body was at 85 meter from the origin okay so in part a you need to find out velocity and acceleration at the time of start now in this question it is not given that uh, the body starts from rest so you should not uh, assume the uh, assume that 
the body starts from origin now if you simply look at the expression for acceleration which is 3 mi uh, 2 minus 3 t it is in terms of time so if you simply put t equal to 0 in that expression what you are getting is the acceleration at the start uh, time of uh, start or at the at the uh, starting time now so finding out the acceleration at the time of start is very simple you can put t equal to 0 in that expression and you are getting acceleration as 2 meter per second square now to find out the velocity at the starting time or at the time of start you need to integrate this expression and put t equal to 0 now a can be replaced like dv by dt in the previous question we replace a as v dv by ds so you should remember the general expression for a acceleration which is dv by dt plus v into dv by ds here since a is a function of time only you can neglect dv by ds and simply use the uh, most common expression for acceleration which is dv by dt now dv by dt equal to the given expression 2 minus 3t now rearrange in the term dv equal to 2 minus 3t into dt that is equation 2 and if you integrate the above equation you will get v equal to 2t minus 3t square by 2 plus c1 where c1 is the constant of integration so don't forget to put that constant of integration which is very important okay so in this expression that is equation number three if you put t equal to zero what you are getting is velocity at the time of start but there is c1 you need to find out c1 then how will you find out the constant of integration c1 for that purpose the two conditions are given the initial conditions are given in the question which is at the time five seconds from the start of observation velocity is 20 meter per second so if you put that condition that is t equal to at t equal to 5 v equal to 20 meter per second you will get 20 equal to 2 into 5 minus 3 into 5 square by 2 plus c1 so you can simply calculate the value of c1 which is uh, getting as 47.5 now if you substitute the value of c1 in the equation 3 we will get the expression for velocity and if you put t equal to 0 in that expression what you are getting is the velocity at the time of start now substitute the value of c1 in the above equation so v equal to 2t minus 3t square by 2 plus 47.5 now for the velocity of the body at the time of start substitute t equal to 0 as i already discussed so we will get v equal to 47.5 meter per second so try to get this value uh, by putting t equal to 0 now uh, it's very simple t equal to 0 this value is 0 and this value is also 0 so you will get 47.5 now the second part distance from the origin at the start of observation distance from the origin at the start of observation so remember in this case the body is not starting from origin that's why uh, it's asked to find out the distance from origin at the start of observation now if you rewrite the equation 4 we need to find out distance so v we have to rewrite as ds by dt so ds by dt is equal to 2t minus 3t square uh, by 2 plus 47.5 since v equal to ds by dt now you have to um, take dt rhs and go for integration so ds is equal to that term into dt and integrating both sides you will get s is equal to 2t square by 2 minus 3t cube by 6 plus 47.5t plus another constant c2 so always uh, remember to put the constant c2 now you need to find out this c2 to get the distance uh, at the start of observation so uh, you can put a t equal to 0 in this expression to get the distance from the origin at the start of observation but you need to find out c2 first so to get the value of c2 another condition is given which is 
at t equal to 10 second distance or displacement is given in the question 85 so if you put the value of t equal to 10 and s is equal to 85 in the equation 5 you will get the value of c2 which is coming as 10 so if you substitute this value of c2 in equation 5 we will get the expression of s so in this expression if you put t equal to 0 you will get the part b of the question so now for, uh, for the distance from the origin at this uh, time of start of observation substitute t equal to 0 so if you put uh, t equal to 0 in this expression you will get 10 so uh, let us uh, uh, observe this uh, question or let us uh, discuss more on this question uh, part suppose you forgot to put the value of c2 what will happen so if you we forgot to put c2 here c2 here in the equation 5 so finally what you will get distance as 0 if you put t equal to 0 you will get distance as 0 which is the wrong answer if you put t equal to 0 what the distance value is actually c2 so uh, putting uh, the constant of integration uh, is very important and finding out the con uh, constant of integration is also very important now part c time after the start of observation in which the velocity becomes zero we already have the equation for velocity in that uh, expression if you put v equal to zero we will get a time that time uh, is actually asking in part c time after start of observation in which the velocity becomes zero so substitute the value of v equal to zero in this equation four then we will get zero equal to 2t minus 3t square by 2 plus 47.5 and it is a quadratic equation and if you solve the quadratic equation using the calculator or uh, the standard pr procedure b square minus 4 ac sorry x is equal to minus b plus or minus root of b square minus 4 ac you will get the value of t suppose uh, in a quadratic equation if you are getting the uh, two values of t one will be positive or the, uh, the second will be uh, negative don't take the negative value take only the positive value so in this question the answer is t equal to 6.33 second so that's all about the uh, section 1.1 which is uh, kinematics of uh, rectilinear translation now uh, please uh, try to solve all the problems uh, uh, in the in section 1.1 uh, in the pdf file i already sent sent to the uh, Linbit, talk to Linbit. So try to solve all the problems in section 1.1, and uh, in the coming uh, days I will upload. Uh, I will upload the uh, videos of uh, 1.2, 1.3, and 1.4. So uh, um, study well uh, this section 1.1 and try to solve all the problems in that video file, and also try to solve all the problems. Uh, all the solved problems uh, in the uh, textbook okay if any uh, doubt in this section uh, regarding this video or regarding the pdf files just uh, uh, what uh, you can call call to my mobile number or uh, do um, do the whatsapp okay so thank you for listening this video